perhaps the future doesn't have to be as what it is expected to be. Perhaps in the future, pollution will become a word that only exists in science fiction novels. Perhaps in the future, trash collectors will pick flowers instead of plastic and banana peels. And on that note, I warmly welcome you to our presentation. We will be presenting our research on behalf of Methodist College under the topic, Today's Garbage, Future's Electricity. One of the root causes for most of the conflicts Sri Lanka is faced with currently evolved from the improper waste disposal habits. Although measures have been taken to dispose dry garbage effectively by reducing, reusing and recycling, no sustainable disposal strategies are followed when organic waste materials are disposed. So, taking this into consideration, we came up with a new and efficient power plant setup that has been customized to fit the needs and requirements of our country. We followed the waste to energy concept and designed a low cost power plant which uses an anaerobic digester as its main component. The lack of an effective and reasonable strategy has led to inconsistent and ineffective disposal practices. Failing to address the escalating matter in a suitable manner has led to many unsanitary and dangerous aftermaths. Garbage accumulated in residential areas like Blumenthal and Mithotomulla collapsing and killing people and destroying houses is one such major fallout. In addition, the greenhouse gases such as methane, carbon dioxide, etc. released from these decades-old dumps prove to be immensely poisonous to humans and they also happen to be greenhouse gases that harmed our ozone layer, causing rapid climate change and increasing the rate of global warming. The landfills and dumps now have become a suitable place for mosquito breeding. Sri Lanka is very much known for its greenery and the natural scenic beauty. But in the absence of a proper organic waste disposal system, the aesthetic value of our country is deteriorating rapidly. This has gone far as to harm our fauna along with the flora. As a consequence, tourism, one of our prominent economic activities, has begun to drop. In short, organic waste is one of the main causes for half the problems faced by our country and even the world. Yes, after analyzing the survey conducted among 92 countries by the World Population Review, it was concluded that Sri Lanka was placed 25th on the list of polluted countries. This would be no surprise considering the fact that solid waste generation in Sri Lanka per day is around 7,000 to 7,500 metric tons. This is one of the vital hindrances for our country's development. Hence, we decided to delve deeper into this subject and provide an efficient yet rational solution for the skyrocketing phenomenon of improper organic waste disposal. As mentioned before, we have followed the well-known waste to energy concept plan, followed by many countries. However, we already have a power plant based on this concept in our country. It was opened by Icon Spence, a blue chip conglomerate. They are a group of companies that focus on various industries such as tourism, insurance and much more. They have done many projects in Sri Lanka and one of their recent projects is the Waste to Energy Power Plant opened on the 17th of February 2021 in Keravala Pitiya. This is the structural view of their power plant. As you can see, their key component is an incinerator through which they are following the combusting and recovering energy from waste method. This rupees 15 billion worth investment is quite the milestone in the solid waste management process in Sri Lanka. It is said to be the key to solving the national trash problem. After doing some research on this, we have come to realize that this type of waste to energy setup might not be the most suitable solution to our issue. One of the major flaws in their system is the increased number of equipment usage and the cost. This power 
plant uses an incinerator to burn waste material including both organic and inorganic products. Hence, they need separate devices to convert the heat generated to power. In addition, other equipments like filters are needed just for the purification of the exhaust gases released from the burning. Waste incineration creates air pollution and compulsorily requires these strong environmental controls. Therefore, the cost to purchase all the above mentioned equipments and set the power plant up is quite over the limit. Another reason is that the end product of burning waste material in incinerators is ash. This ash expelled can be categorized as bottom ash and fly ash. Bottom ash is the non-combustible residue from the incinerator. It is used in construction activities. Fly ash on the other hand is a light, fine powder once again released from the incinerator. This ash has more haphazard effects than benefits. Even the people who work in these plants have a high possibility to inhale this ash and acquire heart diseases, cancer or even face death. Therefore, a detached space is required to store the fly ash without causing harm to humans or other animals. Besides, our country is not in dire need for ash currently. Now, let's take a look at the waste management hierarchy. This hierarchy shows us the most preferred approach to the least preferred approach of waste disposal. Aiken Spence uses the incineration technique of waste disposal. Energy recovery, or in other words, the incineration process does not appear on the top tier of the pyramid. The incinerator is used to burn both dry and wet garbage. The current power plant in Kerala Pitiya requires us to burn our dry waste as well. However, as dry garbage is already being managed effectively in the most preferred ways, reduced, reused and recycled, it would not be prescribed to burn them and recover energy. Which means we are only left with the wet garbage. But our country does not have enough wet garbage to fill the incinerator to the maximum and make the furnace processing a worthwhile investment. Even if you move forward with burning wet garbage, it won't be very fruitful. Calorific value of a substance means the measurement of the heating power of the substance. As wet garbage has very low calorific value, a large sum of fuel should be supplied to burn them. Hence, the fuel consumption is extremely high in waste-to-energy power plants that use incinerators. When it comes to waste management, one size does not fit at all. So, it is very important that we analyze the requirements and the habitat of our local area before choosing the appropriate setup. You can't take one model that works in a wealthy, well-developed country and expect it to work in a lower-income country. That is a completely different market. After taking the waste management pyramid into consideration, we decided to follow the recycling method, which is more preferred and compost the organic waste matter using an environmentally friendly approach. A simple flow diagram that describes our power plant has been shown. This process of converting trash to energy is done in four main phases. The process starts off from each and every household in our country. The Sri Lankan government already has put forward strict rules and regulations for the public to segregate their waste matters before the municipal trucks arrives for collection. The organic waste gets collected by the municipal council truck and is brought to the place where the anaerobic digester has been installed. An anaerobic digester is an enclosed structure where anaerobic breakdown of organic matter takes place. This happens in four stages, hydrolysis, acidification, acetogenesis, and methanogenesis. The anaerobic bacteria present in the digester acts on the organic matter and produces biogas and a digestate. Biogas consists of many greenhouse gases such as methane, carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, and other gases such as hydrogen, nitrogen, and water vapor. Biogas and digestate are the end products of anaerobic digestion of garbage. Biogas gets accumulated at the top of the digester and the digestate gets collected in the bottom. 
An outlet can be attached to the top part and another outlet can be attached to the bottom part to extract the respective products. Agriculture is one of the most important aspects in Sri Lanka's economy. Nevertheless, Sri Lanka's agriculture sector has been facing quite many obstacles. One of them happens to be a lack of organic fertilizers. But the digestate produced by the anaerobic digester can be used as compost, which helps enrich in our crops and soil both. Agriculture is in immediate need of conservation, and this digestate helps improve its current state. Therefore, the digestate can be used beneficially to improve our economy. It is also used in horticulture as animal bedding and also in building materials. On the contrary, biogas has been extracted from the digester, contains gases that pose great threat to both the flora and fauna. But one of the advantages of biogas is that it is a renewable fuel. Renewable fuels are made of straws. Renewable fuels are made from sources that are constantly regenerated and will never go extinct in the foreseeable future. So, we decided to use biogas wholly to produce electricity. Phase 3 is the processing that takes place in the biogas engine. The biogas produced in the digester is directed to a biogas engine through a biogas outlet. The part of the biogas engine can be categorized into three parts the combustion chamber, the turbine, and the alternator. The biogas collected from the anaerobic digester enters the combustion chamber inside the biogas engine. Here, the biogas is combusted in high temperatures. The heat energy released by the combustion chamber is then used to rotate the turbine. As the turbine rotates, heat energy gets converted into mechanical energy. This mechanical energy is then sent to the alternator in the biogas engine, which converts it to electrical energy. Last and final part of this process is distribution. The electricity produced will be sent to the national electricity grid and then be distributed around the country. The order that is emitted when organic waste product is stored in the pits is reduced in this power plant as the waste is carefully stored in an enclosed structure called the anaerobic digester. This can be considered as an advantage of using our power plant. Even the greenhouse gases that are expelled into the environment is minimized as they are used to produce useful energy for electricity production. In addition, the end product, the digestate, produced is also extremely useful and very much, harmful, very much harmless to the environment. As we are not burning the organic waste matter, the fuel usage is also reduced to a greater extent. This setup does not require for us to focus on exhaust gas purification as the entire biogas produced in the anaerobic digester is used in energy production unlike the power plant that has been implemented in Sri Lanka currently. Not only is our setup environmentally friendly, it also proves to be cost effective as the usage of number of equipments is also less. This power plant that uses an anaerobic digester follows the composting method of waste disposal. Composting is a form of recycling. Hence, we follow one of the most preferred approaches in the waste management hierarchy. That means we have implemented a much more sustainable way of organic waste disposal system. Sri Lanka has limited amount of resources and water is one of them. Water is also a non-renewable energy form. In the already present power plant, biogas produced gets filtered and the water vapor in it is sent into a boiler which converts it to steam. The steam is also used to turn the turbine and produce the energy. However, toxic gases aren't used beneficially here. They are simply separated from the water vapor and sent for exhaust gas treatment. But we are straight away using combusted biogas which contains gases that are harmful to the environment to turn turbines and produce electricity. Hence, we are conserving water and producing an advantageous output using toxic gases that would have been released to the environment if not. This also proves to be a favorable impact of our waste to energy power plant. However, there are some disadvantages of using this setup of ours. A temperature of 27 degrees Celsius is required for the anaerobic digester to function, 
which means when the temperature drops or when it rains, the anaerobic digester will fail to function. Hence, this can be considered as a disadvantage of our setup. One of it is that as we are only composting the organic waste, the wet garbage in our country is not sufficient to supply the whole country with high power electricity. But if used parallelly with another power plant, it would help solve our national electricity problem. We can even go a step advantage. but also a great way to power the whole country with more high powered electricity. Another disadvantage is that biogas does not produce a high level of energy when compared to the energy produced by the natural gas. Now, I'll be moving on to our budget for the project. The anaerobic digester costs about rupees seven million four hundred and fifty-four thousand hundred and eighty-two point eight zero to rupees twelve million eighty-seven thousand eight hundred and sixty-four. And the biogas generator of good quality that works efficiently costs about rupees fifty million three hundred and sixty-six thousand hundred to rupees eighty million five hundred and eighty-five thousand seven hundred and sixty. They are cheaper equipment, but it is essential we have quality products when doing a national project. So we have listed the price of products with better work, power, and depreciation. However, when you include the installation cost, cost of maintenance, cost of land and building, labor cost, material transportation cost, custom duty, the whole power plant would approximately be at around rupees 95 million. That means the power plant designed by us is very cheap when compared to the already present waste to energy system in Sri Lanka. In order to reduce the petrol and diesel costs spent when transporting garbage to one particular area from all over the country, we have thought of installing the power plants on a community basis. That is, to install power plants province-wise to make garbage disposal and transportation much more efficient while making sure that there is enough waste to power the increased number of digesters. Besides, the total amount spent on building nine anaerobic power plants is very much less than building one incineration plant. In short, I believe that our waste to energy power plant is more beneficial and cost effective. Furthermore, it's very much environmental friendly as safeguarding the environment is a hot topic globally. Therefore, we believe that this plant will be the most suitable for our island nation. I would like to conclude by saying that what once was a gemstone is now nothing but a country of dust and decay. And we believe that this power plant can be a stepping stone in solving this issue. With that being said, I would like to deliver my vote of thanks. We would like to thank our principal for giving us this opportunity to participate in this competition, our teacher for the advice given, our society president for the support, and last but not least, the Science Society of Royal College for organizing this competition and giving us this valuable opportunity. The team members, Nathania Sofales, Sandra Pundaraja, Vivanshi Mugundan, and Abhinaya Gunaraj. Thank you.